Hello Facebook, it's Monica here, your um, certified coach and your partner in Flow. And I am super duper excited about uh, this Facebook Live that I'm going to be sharing with you. And so I'm going to wait about a minute or so, it's about 7.59, and um, see if we have anybody joining us this evening. If, if not, I will just go ahead and share this insight that God shared with me today that I'm so excited to share with you. And, you know, you can always watch the replay. Hey, Mike. That's my brother, y'all. He is a pastor of Radiant Church in Greenwood, Delaware. And if you're looking for a church to fellowship with and you're in the Delaware area, check out Radiant Church. It's amazing. So, hey, Mike. All right. It's eight o'clock. So I'm going to go ahead and start because I want to respect and honor your time. Um, and so, um, yeah, so hopefully we can um, have a conversation. Feel free to comment in the comment box uh, if you have any questions or have any insight. I'm all about that. So let me tell you what I want to share with you. So every month I go on a silent retreat and today was, was my monthly silent retreat. And so it's been a crazy month. So at the end of May, we lost our grandmother. Well, we didn't lose her. We know where she is. She's in heaven. But um, hey, Deronda, girl. But my grandmother um, passed on May 31st. And so June came in like a wave. It was just a lot going on with me personally, but also in our family. Um, just a little bit about my family. We are a family of faith. And, you know, I feel like we get some heavy attacks from time to time. And June seemed to be the time where this was happening. And so, um, hey, Jamie. And so basically what happened was uh, for the first two weeks of June, I was pretty much back and forth through Delaware and just, you know, dealing with things with family and my grandmother's service and all of that good stuff. My nephew, uh, Michael, graduated and just a lot of emotional ups and downs. Some things happened with some other family members that had us all, you know, praying and concerned. But it was just really seemingly chaotic emotionally. Um, it was really challenging. And it, I just it was a lot. It was a lot. And if you're part of my flow tribe, um, then you got an email kind of detailing some of the things that, you know, that was going on. And you're also getting um, access to my first training called the Hidden Treasure of Trials. But I'll talk about that later. But nonetheless, because of all of this stuff, um, I got back home last week. Last week was my first week home. And I was trying to catch up with everything, clean my house, work on um, some writings that I have to do and business stuff. And it was just a lot. And so today I almost missed my silent retreat. I woke up this morning and I said to myself, I can't go because I'm super busy and I just need to get this stuff done. And so I laid in bed and I prayed. I said, God, should I go to this retreat? And I, the Holy Spirit was so clear and he was like, you need to go. And so I'm going to give you this point right here. If God speaks to you and tell you, tells you to do something or tells you to be somewhere, that means he has something for you. He has something to say. He has something to give you. There is something for you where he's calling you to be. So always show up. Just obey. So I got up. I went and oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. I am so glad that I obeyed God and I went to this silent retreat. And so here's what I want to share with you that God showed, shared with me. And I'm looking on my phone at a picture to see if I can possibly uh, give you a visual of what um, I saw, and maybe um, maybe you'll, you'll, it'll make a little bit more sense to you. But nonetheless, I go to my retreat, and I'm walking, and I see this area of just kind of grass and leaves, and a lot of, not really rubbish, but a lot of foliage, just a lot of grass and stuff. And out of this um, area, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can see that. Okay, maybe y'all can see that. So you see that, kind of see it? all that grass in that area. And you see this little purple flower. And so I'm looking at this area and it's really, really messy. And I see this little stem with three purple flowers in full bloom. I mean, full bloom. And I'm looking um, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit spoke to me and said, silence is zooming in. Silence is zooming in. Because at that point I took my phone and I was zooming into the picture to take a picture of this flower. And so what God said to me was, you know, the reason I wanted you to come here is because there has been a lot of chaos, a lot of things going on in and around you. And in order for you to hear clearly for your next step, you have to zoom in. And often we think zooming in means to uh, do more things, set more strategy. And what he was telling me today, and I want to share with you, is silence is zooming in. And it was in the silence, just quiet still, that I saw these three flowers on this step. So as I continue to walk, God shared some things with me because I've been 
questioning and getting some wisdom and some direction around business uh, execution and ideas and things he wants me to do. And here's what he said to me. He said, you know, Monica, when you look at these three flowers, right, you look at them and they're amid, amidst all this chaos. And this, and even in this chaos, these flowers are still in full bloom. And he, he kind of likened it to life, right, to our life. In the midst of everything that is going on around us, there are things that are still blooming in the midst of the chaos. But the truth is there had to be certain conditions, right? Certain conditions had to be met before those flowers could be in full bloom. The truth is those flowers were always amidst that chaos and people didn't always see them because they weren't always in full bloom. And what I realized was I'm wanting God to like tone down these challenges, tone down this chaos, there's a lot going on. And God made it really clear to me, you cannot be um, a king without the chaos. You cannot be a queen without the chaos. That's going to make sense in a minute because I'm going to talk to you a little bit about David and how this ties together. But what he was saying was basically you can't get to the place of your full blossom without the chaos and the challenges that I place around you. And so one of the reasons he's, he also allows that is that people don't want to go in chaos. People aren't always wanting to go into a place where it looks chaotic. It's a lot going on. And so that chaos is also protection. It's protection because no one's going to pick your flower before it's time when you're amidst a lot of chaos, right? And so when this flower was in full bloom, I began to look at it. I took a picture of it, and God spoke this really clear to me. And I'm saying this to you because after this all happened, he told me to do this Facebook Live, and so I'm obeying. So I know somebody on this live or who's going to watch it later needs to hear this. And he said this to me. I'm going to read it actually from my journal. He said, certain conditions had to be met before they could become, before they could come in full bloom. These conditions have been met and you are ready to bloom. He was talking to me specifically, but now I'm talking to you. Um, and so the, the, the message I have for you today is zoom in. Zoom in and see what has already blossomed. What you're probably doing is focusing on, the, focusing on the chaos and the challenges and all the things that are not the conditions that are not met the things that you think you need, the things that you think have to happen before you can move. And what he's saying is get close, get still, zoom in, because there are things that are already fully bloomed that I want you to take advantage of and I want you to move in. Now, whenever a flower is in full bloom, what do we often do? We pick it. We pick it and we give it to somebody else as a gift. And so what is going on is God is saying, I've bloomed there, I've blossomed you in the midst of this chaos, so somebody else can then be a benefactor of this blossom. You can now give yourself as a gift. People can now pick you and really give you and what you've learned away so it can be a gift to other people. And so what he was teaching me, and I wanna share with you, is the challenges and the chaos are necessary. They are the necessary conditions for you to be in full bloom. And instead of you focusing on all the stuff around, like in this picture, I don't know if you can see it, but I could have looked at all the trees, I don't know, yeah, all the grass, all the little dead leaves underneath, and I could say that needs to be cleaned out. We've got to do something with that. And God is saying, no, 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 no. There's a, a stem with three full blossoms. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take advantage of that. So here's the deal. There are some of you on this live that are waiting for a financial um, blessing or breakthrough or waiting for a, a, a business idea or to execute on something, and you're thinking that there's more things that you need to do before you can do it. And what God is saying, there are some things that are already in full bloom and you're already ready. You're not waiting to get ready. Prepare, but you're not right waiting to get ready. You are fully in bloom. And so whatever it is he's telling you to do, it is time for you to, to take that flower, pick yourself, pick yourself, and give yourself to someone else. And so I want to share that with you because what's important when we're in this season, I just think it's a season of urgency for those God is called to do some amazing work. And we can't wait. We can't wait until conditions are perfect. The conditions that need to be met are the conditions that God creates. And when he's ready to bloom you, no matter what's going on, it's time for you to move. And let me let me just step back when I, when I said to you that chaos, uh, you cannot become a king or a queen without chaos, right? You cannot really bloom fully without chaos. And I'm gonna give you this quick example about David and then I'm gonna hop off. And so, if you don't know, there's a story in the Bible about David who became one of the greatest kings in Israel, okay? David was a little shepherd boy. Boy, Basically, he went to war, beat this huge giant named Goliath. The king at that time named Saul was like, hey, who's this young boy? He should be over here. Something's cool about him. I don't know. So basically, David goes 
and he plays the harp for Saul because he had a gift to play a harp, right? And so he's playing a harp, you know, soothing Saul, but I don't know, Saul loses his mind, something's going on with Saul, and he tries to kill David. He attempts to murder David. So David is on the run from the king that once liked him, who cannot stand him, who's trying to kill him for about 15, about 10 to 20 years, it, you know, commentaries uh, vary with this, but about 10 to 20 years, David is on the run, literally homeless, on the run, running from King Saul, although God had promised David that he would be king one day. And so for the next 10 to 15 years, you talk about chaos, attempted murder, he's, he's, he's having to get bread from people, he's having to kill, he's having to basically forage around to really get what he needs just to be sustained daily, all while he had the promise of being king locked up inside of him. So he's going through all of this chaos, right? But along the way, what David actually, what actually happens is David begins to get men around him who become his army. And so while he's going through the chaos, he's actually collecting things that are going to be beneficial to him when he is the, actually the king. And so what I want to say to you, I'll put a pin here, all this chaos that you're going through, all these things that you're happening, you know, you planned something, it didn't work, you got disappointed. Let me tell you something, nothing is wasted. Everything that God has allowed in your life that you think is wasted or it was a disappointment, God is saying you were collect, he was collecting things for you. So when you are ready to rise to the occasion, you have everything that you need to execute the vision. All right. And so David goes on, he becomes king. And if you read First Chronicles chapter 12, take some time and read it. So the story of David is in First Samuel chapter 18. Um, and you can, uh, First Samuel chapter 13, you can read that. And then if you look at First Chronicles chapter um, 12, you'll see David's army. The people that David had in his army were people that connected with him while he was living in chaos, while he was homeless, while he was on the run, while he was anointed to be king, but he wasn't yet king. And so there are some people, some relationships, God is not even allowing to be close to you because it's not time. But there are some people who will see the chaos and things that are going on in your life that looks like it's all over the place that are connecting to you because they're going to be pivotal. They're going to be instrumental. I'm sorry, instrumental in where God is taking you as you take the, 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 the fullness of what he's called you to do and as you execute that thing, right? And so I wanna remind you that without that chaos that David went through, without those challenges, there would be no strong kingdom. It was through that chaos, all that messiness, all that stuff that went on, all these emotional ups and, and downs and pain and joy, trying to co uh, coincide in the same soul, trying to figure out what you need to do, what's happening. I thought you said this, God, and this doesn't seem like it's happening. All of that, all of that is what God is allowing to happen so conditions can be met, right? So conditions can be met so you can execute clearly what he's called you to do. So I don't want you to lose hope while you're in what, it fe what feels like chaos. It's chaos to you. But if you got closer to that ground, when I was talking about the silent retreat, if you got close, everything in that area was in and of itself whole and it wasn't messy. It was all of it together looked messy, but until God straightens that thing out, you really can't see the clear picture. But even in that, while he's clearing out the picture, there are some flowers that are already in full bloom. Do not hear me. Do not wait until all conditions are perfect to execute what God has told you to do. Don't wait. The time is now. Your season is now. I don't know who you are, right? But you do. But I want to share that with you. And I'm talking to me too. Because God told me to do something and during this time that I'm going to execute on, he told me to go ahead and build my membership site out. Don't wait for it. So I'm going to be building my membership site for the uh, Flow Tribe. You'll hear more about that later. Um, but it, he told me, you don't have to have everything together. Do what I told you to do. Do it now. It is in the doing that you see the blessing of God and that you see what you need to move forward. So I hope this encouraged you. I hope um, you're really taken to heart, right, that all conditions don't have to be met before you can move. But what does need to happen is you got to get to a place where you can be silent. You can zoom in and see what's blossomed in your chaos. Take what is blossomed. You pick that, you give it away, and you impact the world. Thank you, guys. Thanks for checking in. Um, thanks for watching, Toby and Brittany. And hey, Dory, um, I appreciate you guys. Feel free to share this video with anybody um, that you think it would be a blessing to. And you can continue to follow me on my Facebook page and you can go to monicaspate.com and join the Flow Tribe. 
um, where I'm sending out weekly inspiration videos, training, all good stuff for our tribe. So until next time, guys, stay in your flow. Bye-bye.